It's, it's time for the Kyle show. It it's is time, time for, for memes. Yes. <laughs> Let's do this. Woo! Memes. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Woo! Woo! All right. Hello all, and welcome back to another episode of King's Cast. I'm your host, Kyle Pepidone, a.k.a. the kingpin parentheses of spades. And I'm joined here again with the fabulous Jared Dauber. You already know what's up. You already know what's up. You already know what's up. And uh, <laughs> that was some intro you just watched, because I figured since Jared was on with us last week, I didn't really need to come up with a new intro for him. Now you know who I am. Question is, who are you? me well i believe we went on your show for that and we've discussed who i was follow-up question where am i uh if all goes right in post you are in front of nyan cat Ooh, i do love me some good nyan cat <laughs> that's how anyway. could it be too by the way what i didn't find out that that was how could it be too until like oh, years really? after knowing what nyan cat was I had, I actually didn't know yeah, that at all. That is a, that is fully a Hakune Mitsu song. Oh, well, you learn something new every day. And speaking of which, kind of, not really, um, we are continuing our conversation of memes. Last week we oh, talked yeah. about comedy and memes as a whole, and today we're narrowing it down into music because no category of anything is safe. From the memes. Oh, no, it's not. If you think you're safe from the memes, then you are sorely mistaken. The <laughs> memes will find you, and they will, uh, <laughs> I don't know, they'll probably make you giggle. <laughs> <laughs> that is the most threatening thing I've ever heard. But yeah. speaking of music and um, music on the less serious side, you recently wrote a full-on song correct oh, for man. the wmsc talent show what a trip <laughs> <laughs> so first off before we get talk about it like well how was that experience because uh there are some of us in this room right now who's looking who is looking to get into music and they really don't know where to start so if you can just give that anonymous person some insight well uh i wouldn't call myself a musician by any measure i play guitar uh which isn't featured at all on the song i wrote I, I do play ukulele but um i'm very uh i'm very new to to this writing thing and and really this one song was for a talent show that wmsc was having and i thought it'd be fun if i wrote a song like a comedy like a sketch comedy song something in the vein of the lonely island or pink guy without all the uh obscenities and uh um, unregulated Bo, fcc yeah, language some like bo burnham stuff uh <laughs> and, you know because um comedy sort of my thing whether you agree with it or not okay <laughs> and uh uh i thought you know what let's, let's make a little ditty in logic because i've been wanting to learn logic pro 10 for a while to like actually maybe produce higher quality stuff i'm very fascinated by music production i have mad respect for producers like you know uh phineas jack antonoff kanye west um right you know uh, yeah because if you can do producing you can pretty you pretty much you carry the entire yeah. band on your back george martin i mean the beatles right yeah definitely. He's, he's the fifth beetle but um <laughs> yeah so i i whipped up this this song using um lots of uh vocal layering and extreme audio uh not audio auto tune and distortion and yes ukulele and okay. uh it it actually ended up winning uh audience choice uh for for like favorite favorite submission Ooh. for the talent show alongside with um my boy Jake Getz's uh submission which was we were tied exactly 
to the vote. Uh, and he, he performed a couple of, um, he did a cover and an original song. So uh, yeah, two, two original boys. The for, people two original love the boys. music. Two original boys and one uh, talent show. Nice. And, and also um, I had you, but I, I had you do the, the cover art. Yes. I, I, I gave you like a, a picture of me holding a, a garage guitar. band micro oh, guitar hero. Guitar. Yeah. <laughs> guitar hero microphone. And I could have sworn I had the logo turned the other way, but I guess not. Cause you had to edit it out and you, you came up with a, a wonderful, amazing, a very like 2000s R&B inspired <laughs> uh, cover art for, for my song advice from a DJ right and yeah you great. met you messaged awesome. me on discord it's like hey if i give you a picture can i get an album cover in like an hour and i'm like yeah sure and, I, and it has to look bad because yeah. <laughs> but no that's really like overall like everything is pretty cool because i've been writing lyrics for uh, maybe the past year and a half at this point and i'm working on an original song that i have to do for a school project wait i take that back i have to make a music video for a school project I decided to give myself more work and make an original song. Uh, so if I'm burnt out in the next usual. few weeks, what? Go on the extra mile as per usual. Kyle. Yeah. But I was going to say, like, you, you play the instruments. I got the That's words. We, sh- we should work together. And now that I've said that on radio, everybody can hold us to that if we don't come out with something in, let's say, a year. Uh, it's, I mean, it's all right. We've been... Uh... I've waited longer times for artists to release music. I'm still waiting on Big Time Rush to reunite. <laughs> Any day now. Uh, yeah, definitely. Well, that concludes the Pinterview with new artist Jared Tauber. Oh, please. <laughs> but in all seriousness, well, we're talking about memes, so I don't know how serious we can be. But meme songs have not been or, or no, are nothing new. They've been around forever. And I think number story. one is, um, well, what's the first meme-like song you remember hearing? You, dun, dun, dun. Soldier Boy, tell him. <laughs> yeah. Crank that. Soldier Boy, tell him. Oh, yes. From the um, hit video game designer, Soldier Boy? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's, yeah, honestly, yeah. that one. I think my first introduction was um, Captain Sparkle's uh, parody of Teo Cruz's Dynamite called TNT. I think that was the first non-serious song that I heard um, in recent memory. And then, you know, it, it branched out from there. Um, you know, Bring Me to Life, Take On Me, uh, Weird Al eventually, because let's be honest, who doesn't love Weird Al? First off, if of course. whoever doesn't know Weird Al, my heart goes out to them. If you're interested in uh, <laughs> in this Weird Al character, he has some. Uh, he's he's known for making awesome parodies of popular songs, like he did uh, one of of Michael Jackson's "Beat It" called "Eat It." And, Michael Jackson's uh, "Bad" called "Fat." Yeah, yeah, and he, he he's he's incredible. So this isn't a plug. It's just like if you enjoy musical comedy. Um, yeah. He is like the parody song artist. Yeah, he's he's incredible, man. He's got that that tiny Tim hair. Wait, 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 whoa, wait a minute. So remember how we were talking about how long we're waiting for artists to release new music? Oh yeah. Well, Weird Al hadn't put out a, a new album or anything since like 2014, so still kind of waiting on that. But I just looked to make sure I got the year he put out his latest album right. And apparently he Oh, um, he and Portugal the Man um, released a song. So Portugal the Man featured a song that he's featured on. So that's a news to me that I didn't know about. Word. I mean, yeah, my patience has been tested across the board. Uh, the the wait for Tame Impala's new album was uh, a long one. Um, if you're if you're a Fiona Apple fan, my heart goes out to you. Um, thankfully, I I got into her more recently and so i wasn't waiting as long for her new record and even though some were waiting for like 12 years some crazy stuff like that yeah uh yeah wow i mean yeah that's a long time 
Right. Let me let me let me let me verify this. Uh, okay, no, eight years, eight years. It was still an pretty long. Year. Yeah, that was at yeah. least seven years ago. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> at least seven. But, but not, yeah. I mean, also no, that's inaccurate. What do you mean? Well, because it's. I mean, wait, yes. Uh, well, eight I'm, years my ago. Brain hurts. My hurts. Yes, I get it. All right. Math is confusing. It's but, at least, it's been, it's been at least a day. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but there's a whole, like, we bring up meme songs, and I think there's a distinction that has to be made between a song itself that is a meme and a song that is used within a meme. For example. Yeah, that's fair. Wake Me Up, uh, I'm sorry, Bring Me to Life by Evanescence is by no means a meme song, but it is used as a meme. The song itself is a completely seriously, well, at least from what I know, this is not like fact checked or anything, but it is written as a completely serious song from a uh, gothic band, I guess you can call them. Gothic, yes, Evanescence. I mean, which songs are created to be memes though um that's a good question because i don't i don't think that really exists because you can't like predict a meme and you can't right you i know. think i think i'm getting meme confused with comedy so like okay, I would, I get, all right i get you i get so you. like songs written to be intentionally funny like right Captain sparkles weird al um uh, uh, like a boss by the lonely islands uh like all those um like 12 year old youtubers i don't know if you've seen any of them the ones that are like really young making song parodies right Uh, i think the latest one um is leviathan with chug jug with you his Mm. parody of american boy ah yes (laughs) yeah but if we're being honest it's kind of a good like it's got a good beat to it well because i mean american boy is a classic it's one of the best songs to come out of the 2000s Oh, that is, um, yeah, well, of course. And I love how TikTok is sort of just like reviving all, I'm not a TikTok user personally, right. but I like how TikTok is reviving certain uh, throwbacks uh, and and uh, propelling them back into the mainstream and also sort of serving as a, a platform of uh, to, to propel uh, a lot of unknown songs and artists into the mainstream as well. I've seen bands uh, that are like, uh, man, just very unknown, underrated, and ha- and and start seeing their songs get um, uh, in in put into the rotation yeah. of mainstream TikToks, and uh, that's been that's cool. That's 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 something I'll give TikTok. Yeah. Uh, I, I despise it otherwise, but oh no, yeah, oh, no, I'm right. But on it's that done for the with, music yeah. industry. And how yeah. it's like actually launched some artists' careers. That's how Old incredible. Town Road started, right? It yeah. was solely through tech. Well, not solely, but it was mainly through TikTok. I think so, yeah. And then, you know, all 18 different remixes came out with different uh, yes. featured artists. If you want to talk about a meme song, that's it. That is like the definition right there. Mm. It's for sure. So now what, like, I think this is another distinction that we have to be made because the other one failed spectacularly. What makes a song a meme song? I I know we mentioned songs that are used as part of a meme, uh, Take On Me in several vines, uh, like we said, Bring Me to Life, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Nickelback as a whole. Sound of Silence by Simon Garfunkel. Yeah. Hello Darkness, my old friend. Yeah, and I think it's a... Um, it's the emotion behind it. Like th- those particular songs, uh, Bring Me to Life, Sound of Silence, they're used as a meme because they work on a more, much more emotional level that people can relate to. And like we talked about last week, our generation has a tendency to joke about the more um, fragile or touchy subjects in order to make them easier to talk about. So I think uh, in regards to Evanescence and Simon and Garfunkel, that's where those two songs fit into the meme category. That's true. I think it's also about how well a song lyrics can be applied to a right. song. Um, 
like if it's some like generic phrasing like uh um I don't know. I'm 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 blanking on a good example. But there if, was a girl, I love that girl with the entire world. How's that for generic? Uh yeah, but that <laughs> uh I don't know. What's 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 a what's a what's a good Oh you're example? looking for a real song? I'm looking for like a song but I mean like you get what I'm saying though, so I don't really have yeah. to say it. But like you, you like if if it's if it can like pretty much work as its own right. meme template then uh and and it can be applied to a, a visual whether it be in the form of a tiktok or whatever right so lyrics that's, are a big that, thing that will help well. yeah yeah and also like there are other songs that are like just them being them existing is the meme uh number one that comes to mind anything written uh any rap song written by you know like a big youtuber like Logan and Jake Paul, I don't think anybody over the age of 12 is taking that kind of music seriously. Especially with hardcore lyrics such as England is my city. Yes. Shows you how out of date I am. <laughs> Man's not hot. <laughs> Hold up now. Right. That's the greatest song of the decade. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Man, I wonder where he's at. Like you had like big artists uh, yeah. coming out of the woodwork and calling him a legend, and like yeah, he's a legend. He'll he'll have more hits than I'll ever have. Um, but uh, you know, it, it's <laughs> everyone's I a mean, legend nowadays. Every everyone who does like anything is a legend. Yeah. He's like the greatest of all time. Yeah, it's just it's an overused term, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, like it's like don't get me wrong, being called a legend even as a joke feels great. Uh, yeah. That says nothing about my ego. It's just me and my friend's sense of humor. But, you know, like there's very few true legends today. Would you right. agree on that? Or am I just talking nonsense? Yeah, no, I, I, I get it. Um, and I guess we define legend by who has the most influence or impact yeah. in pop culture or the general uh, conscious of the of the public um right you know uh who's 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 a modern day legend uh I, yeah it's one uh, of those terms that get tossed around loosely let's 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 give modern day legend award to uh I don't know, who's like the most influential artist right now <gasps> billy eilish all star <laughs> oh i'm I, dang it i screwed up my own joke i meant smash mouth <laughs> right yes oh of course dang it anyway i messed it up but um yeah no your your answer was probably a bit more serious yeah i mean like you, you know uh any like a-list actor or or, right, or musician yeah. like uh elvis or michael jackson right yeah definitely legends legends but i guess uh Everyone's got a, got a little bit of a legend inside themselves. A little bit, yeah. No, right. I see what you're saying. Right, right. Sure. So another way, like, um, songs can be turned into memes, and you brought this to my attention, uh, is the mm, what you say meme, uh, uh, which yeah. was originally used in the uh, SNL skit yeah. Dear Sister in 2007. Dear Sister. 2007. Um, I had originally thought it was just part of Jason Derulo's song, titled what you say but yeah. that actually came out in 2010 after uh, it was used on snl and the yeah. original soundbite uh came from uh what which like you said and i'm sorry i'm stealing all your talking points um hide and show. seek by emojin heap so i thought that was really cool yeah yeah it's weird uh how, how where things can come from it. and usually they do just come out of like nothingness right um if a song's already established or popular, yeah, it has potential to become memeified, like you know, uh, uh, American Boy. Uh, but usually, a song will become popular, a meme song will become popular through uh, being or becoming a meme. Right. Exactly. And I think it's a, its use in media can really, like in specific media, could really help it 
boosted to that meme status. For example, um, All Star wasn't originally used in Shrek. It was used in the uh, what's the name of the movie? I believe Minutemen with Ben Stiller. Is that the right name? I believe that's the right name of the movie. It's in a movie that is Mystery not Men. Myst- it was originally used in Mystery Men in 1999, and then, but I think a lot of people accredit it to Shrek, which was two years oh, later. Yeah, I, I mean, well, of course, it's a, yeah. the song is synonymous with that movie. Exactly, classic. And uh, you know, if you haven't seen Shrek, neither have I until recently. I, although I had grown up with Shrek Two my entire life, and I still think it's the better movie. It's a masterpiece. Oh yeah, Shrek Two is beautiful. Never, 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 never. Shrek Two is a work of masterpiece cinema. Marvel ain't got nothing on Shrek Two. <laughs> nope. And then I, I don't even remember three, four, whatnot. I, ha- I haven't seen them. The, the Shrek saga ends at two in my book. Yeah, fair. fair. That's, that's my personal headcanon. Well, we still got to be excited for Shrek 5, though. Is there a Shrek? Wait, is there really going to be a Shrek 5? Yeah, it's going to be a Shrek 5. Oh, finally, some good news. Yeah, finally, some good food. We getting some. Are we getting the same actors back? Do you know? Um. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, I think so. Nice. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. I like that. I like to hear that. But so we've really been like spending this entire episode so far trying to distinguish what what makes a meme song a meme song. And I think we're getting there, but we don't have the answer just yet. And one thing I want to focus on now, because I think uh, like everything else I've said so far, this is also an important distinction to make. Um, confusing video game parodies with video game songs. So, so at the start of the episode, we just played Revenge by Captain Sparkles, which is a, can you help me out here? (laughs) I'm blanking. It's a Minecraft parody song. Yes. Thank you. Um, words are hard. (laughs) Yes, and and we, you know how we love our, our Minecraft parodies. It's a parody oh, of uh, parodies in. It's, it's, what, 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 uh, it's a uh, part. It's a parody of DJ Got Us Fallen in Love. Right by Usher. Uh, by right? Usher. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and this uh, song actually saw a resurgence uh, in the meme culture recently because uh, it was somewhere around like late 2019, early 2020, when the opening line of that song, uh, Creeper. Creeper. Yeah. Um, oh man. Um, actually started being used a lot more by like um, PewDiePie who was playing, uh, doing a Minecraft run through at the time. Yeah. Which, and then, you know, he's like the epicenter for memes. So kind of just spread out from there. Which I think then, is so funny that PewDiePie just went on and did a Minecraft series and, and yeah. he had such a big hand in reviving that. So we, we got, kind of got a little sidetracked by Captain Sparkles. I mean, how could you not? revenge and tnt are like no that's a legend that's a legend right there. That, that's what i comfortably legend. call a legend and i think it's because like he's not in the limelight anymore like we're talking about legends i think it has to be somebody who has made such an impact but is not currently as big uh i don't know how to say because he's not gone he's still doing stuff but he's just not where he was back all those years ago right but I'm not a dictionary, so I really can't tell you what the definition of legend could mean. But TNT and Revenge are probably like the top two Minecraft parodies, uh, Minecraft song parodies you first think of. Like you say Minecraft song parody, you think Revenge, you think TNT. At least I did because that's the time I grew up in. However, I would argue that it's, n- well, it's not at all, so I don't have to argue anything because it's fact. But that is not in the same category as artists like um, Nate Wants to Battle, Try Hard Ninja, who I'd mentioned during my Royalty Recommends last week, who use video games as an inspiration to write their own original songs. Like, yes, I'm not discrediting Captain Sparkles or Try Hard Ninja, who did work on the Revenge um, song, as I had mentioned last week. Like I said, I probably should have saved it for this week, but didn't. But 
it's no doubt. As a songwriter, I know even writing a parody song takes a lot of work. But I think using uh, I think using video games as an inspiration to write your own original songs. I'm talking lyrics, melody, beats, all that kind of stuff from scratch. I think that is absolutely amazing. And I could be biased because I've been on a bit of a kick of that kind of music lately. But have you ever listened to stuff like that? Have you ever heard of Nate Wants to Battle? I mean, you did. I, I, I know him now, uh, courtesy of you. But no, that's, that's, that's not a place I've ventured before. Yeah. It's, it's a very... And I thought I had an eclectic taste in music, I guess. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> I guess the more you know, the more you realize yeah. you don't know. Right. Yeah. No. And like, it's really like cool because I feel like I can, like, when it's a game I know, I feel like I can relate on two different levels now. Because, for example, Nate Wants to Battle, from what I've heard, like, I've been listening to a lot, but a lot of it is like, you know, guitars, heavy drums, all that kind of stuff. So not only can I relate to it on the, heavy music side, which I'm into. I'm literally wearing an ACDC shirt right now, which I might have worn during last the last time. episode. Yeah. I did, didn't I? Oh, that makes me look bad. <laughs> it, it makes you look consistent. And, and if anything, I'm, invi- I'm violating the continuity. I mean, we didn't record these on the same day. So, but, so on one area, I can relate to him on the heavy music stuff. But also when it's a game I'm familiar with, like, uh, another kick I've been on recently is Five Nights at Freddy's. I don't know ah, yes. why, but I'm just fascinated. Probably because the so- story is so expansive and told almost solely through environmental game details. And I love environmental story design. Yeah, but like can, Portal 2. Exactly. That's like the number one thing I think of when I think of uh, environmental design. Because it's so cool how you can tell a story without telling a story per se. I know. And I think Valve does a really good job with that. And that comes from me never having played a Valve game in my life. Please don't shoot me. We're good? Okay. I'm still alive. (laughs) But I can... Uh, You might might have not played a Valve game, but you are always playing Valve's game. Steam. Yes. uh, Gabe Newell's game. He controls life. Yeah, but like uh, when I when they put like when they release a track of a game I know, um, like Five Nights at Freddy's, um, uh, I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but Doki Doki Literature Club, ah, um, yes, classic, classic. Goat Simulator. Say, Goat Simulator. Well, I don't know if he's put out a song on that. I could have missed it. Well, I haven't heard his entire discography yet. At least not yet. Uh, no, maybe not. But there's, if there's not already, there should be. A I'm song sure somebody song. has. I, I faintly remember somebody putting one out. But yeah, like Goat Simulator 2. Like now I can relate to it on a music level and as, as a gamer. And so right it, ju- it just gives me a whole different feeling than normal music does. Like, don't get me wrong. Normal music is awesome. But there's just some feeling that I don't get from normal music that I get from listening to these types of people. And it's probably because of my love of video games is almost on the same level as my love of music. The only thing is I think I, it's a little bit more in my ability right now to make music rather than a video game. Cause I don't know anything about coding. I think nowadays I consume more music than I do video games. And that wasn't always true, but, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard. I mean, what is, what is life without music? I mean, uh, life without video games for me personally, unimaginable, but like for the world at large, mm, but music. Oh no, totally. That's that's like, it's, it's practically like encoded in in, in our nature. It's like, it's just, even if it's just like banging a rock on another (laughs) rock, (laughs) people will find a way to make music. Oops. Let me ask you this. Are you familiar with Fallout Boy? Only one of my favorite bands of all time in my top three for show. Up How there about with Panic at the Disco and 21 Pilots? Awesome. Okay, that's two out of three. What about My Chemical Romance? 
Yeah, man, my camp's the best. I got tickets to see them in the fall. Nice. That's actually really cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm so stoked. Uh, yeah, great band. Uh, what 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 can you say? Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge is my favorite record of theirs. That, nice. I'm uh, more particular to Black Parade, um, just because, you know, I really love that one. And when I found out it's a concept album, like it tells a story cover to cover. Yeah. You know, I, I love in any album like that immediately, but yeah. oh, go ahead. Well, I love American idiot by green day, which is like uh, one of the best rock albums oh, yeah. of the 21st century so far. Yeah, totally. And just a masterpiece. So all those bands, you know, pop punk and, and pop rock is a very special place in my heart. A right. genre I always gravitate towards. Yeah. But that's a little too serious for this particular topic. So are you familiar with their particular naming conventions in some of these songs? Uh, bands like Fall Out Boy, Panic at the Disco, uh, yeah, MCR, e ETC. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, not ETC. That says et cetera. But so there, a lot of their songs are ridiculously long in length for no particular reason. Uh, it's not like any of the words in their song titles show up in the songs themselves. And I've seen a couple of posts floating around, or should I say reposts, because that's all social media is mm. now. But I've seen a lot of people making fun of this, like, oh, somebody wrote ridiculously long, and then somebody will comment as a joke by Fallout Boy, and everybody will laugh and hilarity will ensue. But I was, I'm, as a songwriter, I'm very interested in that i'm like why are they naming these songs the way they do because they don't really seem to relate to any of the content in the actual song and i actually found one uh on behalf of fallout boy actually i don't know if um songwriter and guitarist pete wentz speaks for all bands like this uh when he says it but uh, um for his band fallout boy he said a lot of bands in the past uh, have said, quote, a lot of bands in the past have designed titles simply so they can fit in DJ's mouths. And we think that's pretty pathetic. When he was <laughs> asked about uh, one song in particular, which was our lawyer made us change the name of this song so we wouldn't get sued. Which is a true story. Yeah. Like <laughs> for this song itself, which I, I find that very interesting because the whole um, emo scene, the punk scene, uh, it's kind of like that we don't want that mainstream play there. The whole emo scene was an underground was supposed to be an underground thing. And so the fact that they made these titles too long or too long for any DJ to say, I think that's actually like really cool. Like it's a much more different way of going about naming things than, Oh, this was the last line of the chorus copy <laughs> paste. It's, it's, it's very that, um, that song you just mentioned was originally titled My Name is David Ruffin and These Are the Temptations. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. And, and uh, that, that uh, song comes from, from Under the Cork Tree. And, right. uh, and I don't even think that's the longest title on that album. I don't think so. That, there's one called I Slept With Someone in Fall Out Boy and All I Got Was This Stupid Song Written About yeah. Me. And that's one of my favorite Fall Out Boy songs, period. Um, and to, to comment on the trend of um, having the title of your song not reference a lyric in the song. I mean, that was Panic at the Disco's entire yeah. debut record of Fever You Can't Sweat Out. There's not, a single, there's not a single song on there whose title references any lyric in, in that song. Right. And that's where... They're, uh, all mo they're like movie references. They're like, like Chuck Palahniuk uh, references and... and movies yeah it's like so much uh, uh and that's, i mean it's that's a called. creative way of thinking about it but yeah. what i love most when i was reading about uh what pete wentz had to say is under the cork tree their uh fall out boys album from 2005 the two songs that became like the most well known i forget the exact terminology they used but like the two biggest songs off that album were dance dance and sugar we're going down mm -hmm. two of the shortest song titles on that album yeah. and it's like i don't know if that's what they intended or if they had a plan that it backfired well, there, there's one song um and it's the last song on the album just called xo right yeah uh, but unfortunately that one, did not, that one did not make it as high 
as yeah. uh, the other two. And like, like, it's come so on, good, let's though. be honest. It's all so good. Let's be honest. Sugar, we're going down. Is a great song. Yeah, it's a classic, man. But did you know Fall Out Boy, Panic at the Disco, My Chemical Romance weren't the first bands to do this? Yes, it became a thing uh, with email music in the early two thousands. But actually, the earliest uh, dated one that I was able to find was Pink Floyd in 1969 with their song, Several Species of Small Furry Animals Gathered Together in a Cave and Grooving with a Pict. That's a there mouthful. You there you go. You know, no, no, there is no such thing as originality. Unfortunately not. But no, I mean, look, look, at, uh, look at Fiona Apple's... 1999 album when the pawn and so on spotify i'll read when the pawn dot 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 but nice. the actual title of the album which is written over the album cover is when the pawn hits the conflicts he thinks like a king what he knows throws the blows when he goes to the fight and he'll win the whole thing before he enters the ring there's nobody to batter when your mind is your might so when you go solo you hold your own hand and remember that death is the greatest of heights and if you know where you stand then you know where to land and if you fall it won't matter because you'll know that you're right that's the name of the album what that's a whole song in and of itself yeah <laughs> Oh my gosh! I, 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 you just kept going like, okay, it's got to be over soon. It's got to be over oh. soon. I just kept getting lower and lower and lower. I thought it was gonna fall out of frame for a second. Um, for those listening, um, I'm I'm recording this video as well. So, um, if you're listening, I guess you wouldn't have seen that, but that doesn't matter, I guess. Anyway comedy songs songs made for the purpose of comedy are actually really good and yes there are a lot of songs that are yeah. taken as jokes all star um photograph by nickelback um yeah rock star by nickelback yeah yeah exactly like they're made fun of but they're genuinely good songs in my opinion i like them i know yeah i mean i was i've just been on a, a huge lonely island kick recently oh I've been on like a huge Lonely Island kick nice. recently and uh, they have this album called Turtleneck and Chain and I've been, uh, that's in, been on my heavy rotation and, and they have like, Lonely Island has collaborated with Justin Timberlake several times and anytime they do that, like it makes for an amazing song. They've collaborated with uh, Rihanna, Shy Ronnie. Wow, really? Uh, so uh, uh, like Shy Ronnie too is actually such a great song and um uh, what, what is it? Uh, uh, Mother Lover with Justin Timberlake is so flames. It's like legitimately catchy and just <laughs> really well produced and, uh, of course, hilarious. But Turtleneck and Chain is, is an amazing album. And it was nominated for a Grammy for Best Comedy Album and it lost to like a Jimmy Fallon record. And I've never listened to that one, but it's, it's so hard to imagine that any comedy record beat out Turtle Neck and Chain. It's such a classic. Yeah. Does anyone remember whatever that Jimmy Fallon album was? I, I don't know. Um, like I'm looking to our, but audience. everyone knows Turtle Neck and Chain. Everyone knows. Turtle I'm looking Neck to our live audience and uh, there's nobody here to answer your question. I'm sorry. Well, that kind of just proves my point. King's Chaos is not filmed in front of a live studio audience. No. <laughs> but We're not WandaVision. <laughs> unfortunately. Mm. But we're going to try something new today. At the end of the wow. last two-parter, um, Marvel vs. DC with Jeff Nelson, I introduced new segments into the show. Number one, Name of the Game. Then I moved on to Thinking Caps. And now we're going to try something else new, The World of Fakes. Basically, Ooh. what this one is, is we find fictional things and we say which one is our favorite. So today we're going to start off with who is your favorite fake or fictional actor? And I don't know if this is your answer, but an example would be Joey Tribbiani from Friends. He played Matt LeBlanc plays Joey Tribbiani, who in the show is an actor. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Totally. Okay. So, do you want to go first, or should I? Uh, well, you're the host, so let's hear it from you. All right. So, my favorite actor, and I totally forgot about this one, 
uh, until a few minutes ago because I needed to refresh my memory. Um, but Daniel, I uh, had Daniel Hillard played by Robin Williams in Mrs. Doubtfire. So mm. Robin Williams' character in that movie is an actor uh, kind of on like a television show, um, stuff like that. And he dresses up as Mrs. Doubtfire to get closer to his kids um, because his wife won them in the divorce. It's been a while since I've seen the movie, but I'm pretty sure this is the basic plot of it. And then at the end of the movie, the character of Mrs. Doubtfire, played by Daniel Hillard, played by Robin Williams, becomes a part of the TV show. Like the character of Mrs. Doubtfire is now a TV icon within the universe of the movie. Once again, very, I probably overcomplicated that explanation, but I yeah. think that would be it's a good one. Thank you. I think that's mine because it's such a good movie to begin with. So, and Robin Williams, um, rest in peace, uh, yeah. just cracks me up all the time. Yeah, Robin Williams again, another legend. Yeah. Um, I love uh, Dead Poet Society so much, and uh, um, what was what was, what was his uh, um, Aladdin? He was in Aladdin as the genie. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking of a specific movie. It's called um, Good Morning Vietnam. Yes. Yeah, that's not a great one too. Jumanji. Dead Poet Society is so great. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Robin Mo- the Robin movie had a lot of great Williams. Robin Williams has been in a ton of great movies. And and a lot of great movies have had a lot of great Robin Williams. Yeah. <laughs> But now I have to ask you, who is your favorite fictional actor in the world of media? If you asked me before 2019, I'd tell you Trevor Slattery, who um, is a character in Iron Man 3, played by Ben Kingsley. And he plays the actor Mandarin, the spoilers, the fake Mandarin, Um, not Aldrich Killian, but like the, the, the puppet, the face of the operation. I think his part is so funny. A lot of uh comic book fans were mad yeah. about the twist but i think it's just hilarious he did such a great job in that and it's it's um it just makes for great content it's it's memorable and it's um something i think about when i think about the mcu so uh you know yeah no that's a great that, answer that. i didn't even but, think about that yeah but post 2019 oh, there's more uh, i i want to i want to i want to say that my new favorite movie actor uh, is Rick Dalton from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, played by Leonardo DiCaprio. That was going to be my answer too, but then I remembered Mrs. Doubtfire. But like yeah. that movie, I didn't get that. Like while watching the movie, I didn't really get it. It just seemed a little slow for my taste. Um, but it it just did a complete 180 by the very end. Yeah, no. The ending is amazing. Yeah, it's, it's honestly the best part. Yeah, it's a uh, yeah, it's it's uh, not a conventional narrative right film. But then again, and, a lot of Tarantino yeah. stuff isn't conventional, right? And it's it's and it's if anything a hangout movie like Days and Confused, right? Uh, and and that's something that like didn't really sit well with me after I, I saw it after. After I saw it in theaters, um, but like in hindsight, I, I just remember enjoying it yeah. uh, for, for what it is. And uh, yeah, so Rick Dalton. Uh, nice. Yeah, Leo, Leo gives a great performance in that. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's, 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 of course, between him and Trevor Slattery. I'm going to say currently Rick Dalton, but of course, uh, Ben Kingsley and Iron Man 3 is absolutely incredible. <laughs> so if that's a suffice answer. Oh, no. Yeah, more than suffice, actually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I, I do want to say one, one last thing before we wrap up. Uh, I wouldn't say Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is my favorite Tarantino movie. Um, it's up there. Um, but I think I'd probably have to say Kill Bill is probably mm. my favorite. And I'm, I'm counting mm. volumes one as two as just one movie. Yeah, just because the narrative gotta, as a whole, gotta. I liked. Right. Would you say the same or do you have a different opinion? uh different opinion um i I would go with like uh you know i love all his movies but uh 
Django is so good, um, and also um, uh, Inglorious Bastards is amazing. Um, as is uh, uh, and it's not a lot of people's favorites from him, but I I think Hateful Eight is so captivating. That's a fairly and, new one, right? Yeah, uh, but yeah, those 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 are the ones I like. That's pretty um, cool. Yeah, but uh, Inglorious Bastards, like I I I've seen it only once, and it was years ago, but I still just remember loving it so much. It's honestly due for a rewatch. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Tarantino, another legend. Just <laughs> capping it. Capping off with it, just yet another legend. New title, new title of the episode, just legends. Yeah. But with that being said, that is going to bring us to the end of our 20th episode of King's Chaos. Sound the bells and I don't have any sound effects, but you get the idea. Jared, give me a quick celebration. Oh! Thank you. Thank you. That was beautiful. So, dear viewers, audience members, and everyone in between, I will see you next week for more King's Chaos. I Even I don't know what it's going to bring yet. We'll find out. But anyway, have a maximum week, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye. Okay, everybody. Peace.